Today we're going to demonstrate to you the well-known Collins 32S3 transmitter. Covers uh, uh, three and a half to thirty megahertz handbands. And this equipment was designed in the late fifties, and I think produced all the way till the uh, late sixties, maybe early seventies. This particular one is a late model, round emblem, as you can see has all the Teflon wiring and it is in a very nice condition. Um, let's get started. This is going to be a test setup. Obviously the transmitter is the centerpiece. Here we have the uh, microphone and the uh, data to simulate a Collins microphone. This is that plug I was talking about. It's a difficult one. Um, and then of course we have our bird watt meter with the 250 watt slug. It will dump the power into this dummy load here, and here we have a receiver, the Acer FT817ND, to make sure that the uh, modulation sounds correct. Let's uh, get to work. Here you see the back of the transmitter. Uh, basically, gonna uh, connect the audio up through the phone patch. That's parallel to the microphone uh, input connector. And of course we need PTT push to talk, which is the key line. And I do that to hook it up to my uh, Daytong uh, speech processor, which allows me to use a uh, low impedance microphone. Uh, because the radio needs a high impedance microphone, which I don't have. Plus the fact that the uh, connector on the front is a uh, narrow uh, uh, plug which I don't have either. It's a typical uh, Collins connectors, microphone connector for those of you who know. So this will allow us to uh, demonstrate the ra uh, radio to you, the transmitter to you, without uh, having the original microphone. Some other features, there is obviously an output for the receiver. The transmitter receiver relay is actually inside the transmitter. Uh, this is the uh, RF output. Uh, we got a uh, uh, antenna relay uh, output for an amplifier, key also for an amplifier, receiver, mute, mute signal, anti-fox, uh, this is PA disable in case you use it as a uh, exciter, uh, ALC output for the amplifier, there is a 6.3 volt AC output, converter output, and a CW side tone output, this is not used, and this is obviously our uh, Power connector that needs 6.3 volts AC, 275 volt uh, uh, for the uh, driver circuits, and 850 for the amplifier, and a minus 100 volts for the negative uh, uh, first grid voltage for the uh, amplifier. A quick look under the hood. Um, she is built very well, typical Collins. That is the uh, crystal deck that you see there, uh, one crystal for every band, here are the uh, IF sections, the pre-mixer before you go into the PA, this is the balance modulator, this is the AF section. Uh, transceiver, the uh, sorry, the transmitter does have a, uh, a Vox uh, uh, option that uh, can be used as well. This is the RF deck, it's Collins uh, famous slug rag. As you turn the RF sections, all these uh, slugs come up and down simultaneously. And of course this is the PA with a uh, cover to protect the user from the 850 volts that, uh, that exists there. That uh, is not a good thing to touch. Here we have the uh, inside of the 32S3. This is the uh, crystal oscillator deck. This is actually the second mixer. These are the uh, RF stages, tuned circuits. This is the uh, PA section. Here you see the uh, mechanical filter. Here you see the uh, ring mixer, the uh, single side band modulator, the double side band modulator, excuse me. This is all part of the audio processing. Here 
here you see the uh, sideband crystals. So you see it's uh, completely original. No modifications were done to this uh, to this unit. Looks very nice. Go over the tune-up procedure. Pretty straightforward. Uh, mic mic gain all the way to uh, zero. Then we switch the radio to tune. Then we go here to PA grid and we observe the meter. Obviously we preset PA tuning and exciter tuning to three and a half. That's the first thing you want to do. Uh, transmitter VFO uh, needs to be the switch there. Then we're going to slowly increase uh, the uh, microphone until we see grid current. Uh, then we peak that. And then we go to PA plate and we tune for we tune for a dip in the plate current and then we're basically tuned. Uh, if we then go to operating you switch to ALC and you set the ALC for a minimum meter activation. You don't want the ALC to be uh, all the way out because that means you're only limiting the, amp the PA amplifier. So ALC needs to be monitored when you're actually uh, operating it. All right, let's see how we get uh, uh, transmit results here. One, two, three, four, five. HZ, I get about 140 watts here on 80 meters. One, two, three, four, five, and my ALC is uh, just moderately active. Is what you want. And uh, the modulation sounds quite good. One, two, three, four, five. And uh, works quite well. One, two, three, four, five. Now, of course, the 140 watts you see here is uh, is on the high side. The reason is because I use solid state rectifiers in my uh, uh, power supply. 512F2, I think it is, the Collins power supply. Uh, your mileage might vary if you use the tube rectifiers, so that gives a little bit lower voltage on the PA. Um, but all in all, it works quite well. See what we get on uh, 40 meters. So uh, this is the band switch 7.1 with voltage at uh, 7100. Uh, so my VFO is at 100, that is uh, 70, uh, 7 plus 100 kilohertz is 7100 that's the way you do that then of course we tune this to uh, pre-tune this to 7 on the dials here microphone back uh, uh, back that off then here we go to tune but we set this to uh, to PA grid as I said earlier same thing again set it in tune microphone gain Let's see if you can get any grid current. If you don't see any grid current, you gotta increase the microphone, get a uh, microphone gain a bit. Here we have our grid current. Then we go to uh, PA plate. We tune there for the dip, remember. And then I go back to PA grid to uh, see if that has dropped a bit because there is some interaction and it looks like we are tuned then we switch it back to LSB to operating and we're gonna see uh, what kind of power levels we get here now when you start transmitting at full power it's sometimes you might have to optimize the uh, PA tuning a bit for instance the uh, 50 ohm load might have to be varied a little bit for maximum matching so uh, that those are uh, optimizations you can make once you uh, on the actual transmit mode. Okay, okay, we're tuned. I needed both hands to do the uh, loading optimization. As you can see, that uh, I had to back that off a little bit. We get 140 watts again, and uh, as you see, 
I just kept the microphone drive to the point where my ALC is barely activated. One, two, three, four, five. And we get our 140 watts again on the 7.1 megahertz frequency. You can do quickly a test on the, I leave this in lower sideband, put the receiver on upper sideband. Then you can get an idea for the uh, sideband suppression. One, two, three, four, five. As you see, uh, the receiver stays quiet when we're on upper sideband. If I turn this to, if I turn this to upper sideband as well. One, two, three, four, five. We are now in upper sideband. My dial is at uh, 100. One, two, three, four, five which is 7.1 megahertz. Works quite well. Let's go to uh, 14 megahertz. Alright, we're now at 14.3 megahertz. You can see the switch is 14.2 plus 100 is 14.3 megahertz. This is what we also have the Yezu at. If that zooms in. And let's see what we get here. We're on upper sideband, one, two, three, four, five. Upper sideband. We get 125 watts here, 125 watts. One, two, three, four, five, testing. 125 watts on 14.3 megahertz. As you see, my ALC is, uh, is barely moving, is what you want if it gets too high back after microphone gain. One, two, three, four, five. All right, 21.2 plus 100 kilohertz. We are at 21.3 megahertz. The excited tuning at 21 and the PA tuning at 21. And I had to uh, play with the loading a little bit to get maximum output power. We're testing an upper sideband and we're monitoring our ALC again by keeping the microphone gain in check. Let's see what we got. LC is in check. Our output power is 110 watts. And we're at 21.3. Which is also what we have on the dial here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Sounds very good. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, um, 110 watt is actually uh, on the high side again. The uh, manual specifies this uh, radio, this transmitter, for 90 watts uh, PP at uh, 21 megahertz and 80 watts at 28 to 10 meter band, which is what we're going to try now. So don't panic if you don't see that on your unit, because uh, the nominal is really what you uh, what you. Uh, would expect there for 80 watts at 10, 90 watts on 20, uh, on 15, and 100 watts uh, minimum at all the other bands. So let's see uh, what we get on 10 meters. We are on 10 meters now, 20, 21A. Now the good news is this uh, transmitter does not have the standard crystal in there. Uh, normally it only has one crystal for uh, 10 meters, which gives you a 200 kilohertz band span. That wouldn't be much. So this unit has optional crystal uh, crystals here, three of them. So we have a total of 600 uh, kilohertz band span on 10 meter, which is uh, uh, not what the standard uh, uh, 32 uh, S3 has. Um, and we are now actually at 28.3. So my first position covers uh, 28.2 to 28.4. The second position is 28.4 to 28.6. And the third one is 28.6 to 28.8. And we're testing at 28.3, which is 28.2 plus the 100 kilos here. And that's what we have for our Yezu. Let's see what we get. We got a little bit over a hundred watts. 
again that is on the high side uh, we are at 29 9 28.29997 uh, a little bit difficult with one hand one two three four five That's better. One, two, three, four, five. Ten meter upper side bend, twenty-eight point three megahertz. My ALC is in check, as you can see. A hundred watts on ten meters. One, two, three, four, five, and it works perfect. All right. So that basically concludes her demo. For all bands now this radio is like this tra this transmitter is actually general coverage by putting in other band crystals it can cover the entire uh, uh, HF band with the exclusion of some five megahertz segments if I'm not mistaken so uh, the Collins designed this as a general coverage transmitter and um, did a good job now this is the round emblem this is a very late model so this particular one has all the Teflon wiring which will last forever, earlier models did not have that. So um, you can see 32S3 serial number, late serial number and it's in very nice condition, the chest is very clean, tubes uh, have no blackening. That's also true for the PA tubes, you cannot see that right now but uh, I don't think this unit has been used much. Collins 32S3 transmitter, part of the S line. The uh, 32S1 is pretty common. This 32S3 is pretty uh, pretty rare. You don't see too many of those anymore. And this particular one is in excellent excellent condition, as you can see. I would give it a nine on a scale from one to ten, maybe even more than that. Thank you for watching this video.